by the restless sea. We are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, The Strange Judgment. Someone is on the trail below. Now they are coming closer, pointing at my cave, here so high above the sea, at the pile of moss which is my bed and the granite slab, my table, the stoneware pitcher, the loaf of dry bread. Soon they will turn. See now, just like the others, they are going back down the trail, like the village folk who go to the marketplace by another trail so as to avoid me. They will tell others about me, about the fearful old man in the cave above the sea, with his little wooden cross, ascetic old man with bloodshot eyes. They do not know the real reason I am here, that once many years ago, before I took a vow to do penance in this prison in the open air, I lived down there on the little islet near the salt marshes at Girand, lived with my wife, Bruin, and fished. Now only my niece, Perrot, comes to me every morning, bringing me bread and, and talks to me. But I, I cannot answer. I can talk to no one, dare only to kiss her forehead. But then, so long ago, I had many friends. These shaggy hands do not show it, but I was strong then, and the muscles of my body were hard. I could fish with the best of them. Ah, that Pierre Cambromé has the devil's own luck. <laughs> he left no sardines for us others. Can I help it that I know where fishes play, uh -huh. huh? Ah, look at your name. So? Cambromé. Meaning the sea bends to your will. <laughs> it's in our family. We know our trade. Oh, huh? devil's luck, I call it. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Oh, there is my wife. Pierre, I'm so glad you're back. <laughs> Hello, my wife. Pierre, I've got good news for you. And I have something to tell you. Come now, let us walk up the path to the house together, eh? You look so happy, darling. <laughs> I should be. We have made money, my sherry. We can afford a bigger vessel. Oh, please, no, Pierre. But the sardine fishery has brought us money. The boats we have are only small. With a bigger boat, I could go cod fishing. I don't know. You'd be away so long. I love you so much, Pierre. The days and nights are so long when you're at sea. Then I shall stop going for sardines. No, I don't want that. I know, I know. Cod fishing is too long to be away. I think so. Then I shall stick to the sardines and a little deep sea trade for the dealers, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was a good haul, this trip. Let me see. Here, look at this account. With the house and the island, the boats, and now this new catch. Well, one more trip and we will be worth money. Much money? <laughs> 12,000 livres, I should say. Good. Of course it is good. What woman in the oh, village... Oh, I mean now... because we'll need a little more now. Sherry, what, what, what do you mean? Remember how we talked about... about a little one? I remember. Oh, no. no you mean... Mm-hmm. Bruin. Oh, you sweet one. Maybe it will be a son, eh? A son. Yes, a son. And we'll name him Jacques. Yes. And when he is old enough... We'll take him to the carnival. Yes, we'll take him to the carnival. That is enough candy for today, Jacques. No, no. 
Papa. I want that peppermint No, candy. no, Jacques. Let him have it, Papa. Bruin, you are spoiling your boy. Uh, here, please. Let me have half a dozen peppermint sticks. Eh? That ought to satisfy. I do not want the doll. I want the gun. But you are too young, little Jean. Next year, the gun, maybe. Take the doll. No, I want the gun. I want the gun. You see, Bruin, he has a will of his own, that boy. Oh, I'll buy that gun there, please. I'm afraid, Pierre. There it is, Papa, in that window. What a beautiful bicycle. Pierre. But, Mother, a boy of his age should have a bicycle. The others in the village have none. How now? Our Jacques is no ordinary boy. Here, this way. Step into the store with me. I will buy it for you now. Pierre, we're spoiling him. He's so young and he wants so much. We're spoiling him dreadfully. Oh, he will outgrow it. He is only six. Wait until he is ten. He will not be spoiled when he is ten. Where is Jacques? Upstairs. Oh, uh, Jacques! I sent him upstairs. Why, Bruin? He's been fighting again. He all but killed Mortre's son. Oh. <laughs> Why do you weep, Bruin? They're saying in the village he put out Pugot's little girl's eye. Nonsense. In the village they will talk about anything. Oh, but he will be one for the girls, that Jacques. That isn't all. Last week, the fowl, he twisted their necks just for fun. Such things make one bloodthirsty like a weasel. Oh, it is nothing, Bruin. <laughs> Do not We please. He is young. He is only ten. Wait till he grows older. He will be the perfect gentleman when he is fifteen. Wait and see. Come on, sit down to supper, Pierre. Ah, the stew, it smells good. Pierre. Uh, where is Jacques, eh? I don't know, Garon, maybe, or Savney. He's getting a little wild, Pierre. Oh, a boy of 15 needs to be active. It is natural. Pierre, remember the time you walked 20 leagues to repay a prank the dealer had overpaid you? Yeah, that, that was a walk, eh? <laughs> Why isn't Jacques like that? I don't... You mean... Has our Jacques taken money? A little. I had a few coins and a jug in the cellar. Well, a young fellow needs money to carry on, I suppose. But that is not right. No, no, that is not right. Oh, he's still young. Maybe in a year or two he will be settled. Maybe he will not be so wild. Who knows? Maybe he will calm down. <laughs> What is it, Sherry? This table, it is strange. What has happened to the oh, other? Oh, Pierre. This, this furniture. I know, I know. All the furniture, it is not our stuff. What happened to it? Rouen, <laughs> what happened to our furniture? Look in the wardrobes, too, and in the closet. The linens, they are gone. The sheets, everything. Where has this chair come from? <laughs> Neighbors, they loaned it to me. You, you have traded our furniture? No, Pierre, no. Then, then what has become of it? I tried to stop him. He wouldn't listen to me. Jacques, eh? He sold it. Didn't he? Didn't he? Answer me, Bruin. Yes, I tried to stop him, but I couldn't. Where did he go? Where did he go? To the cafe in town, I think. But it's late. He should be back soon. Oh, Pierre, what shall we do with him? I do not know. Imagine a youth of 17 selling his family's own furniture so that he may carouse in a cafe. Maybe he isn't really bad. Maybe he just needs someone to talk to him. Jacques, is that you? Yes, it's me. Where have you been, Jacques? Oh, at the cafe. Is it your business to know? Your mother and I want to talk to you, Jacques. All right, all right. Make it quick. Jacques, listen to your father now. Son, you are old enough to make your own way. You mean work? And what is so wrong in earning your bread with your hands, eh? Ah, fishing. I cannot stand the smell. If one can handle the money that comes from fish, it is not too much to stand their smell, Jacques. Camera may have always been men of the sea. It is not too much to ask of my son. Oh, Maybe it is better if I go away. Jacques. Now, son, that, that is not what we meant. It's just that times are getting a little harder. There's your uncle's family to think of. 
Joseph's oh. wife is sick, and the little girl, Perrot, needs a doctor's care. It all takes money. Well, let them pay their own way. Have a care, Jacques. It is true. He is my brother. One must be loyal to his kin, whatever. And I say I am closer than your brother. Charity begins at home. If you are giving any money, then why not give it to me? We're already half poor from all your carryings oh, on. Oh, say nothing of that, Cherie. But all you are asking of him is to lend a hand with the fishing. To earn the bread he eats and the money he spends. Will you be quiet, woman? You have put my father up to this. Have a care, Jacques. You are talking to your mother. Well, if it had not been for her, nothing would have been said about the furniture. Meddling old woman. Silence! No! Dear, don't you kill him! Get up, Jacques. His head is cut. Suppose you've killed him. Two a.m. So late, and I'm so tired. Rouen, is that you? Yes. Where are you? In bed. It's so dark. Have you been in Jacques' room? Huh? Yes. How is he now? A little better. That was a bad beating you gave him. He should not have spoken to you that way. Oh, I didn't mind, really. But it was unkind the way he spoke of Joseph and his family. The little Perrot. How's the mother, by the way? No better. I fear for her. It's bad. I'm so tired. Come to bed, Brian. Yes, I will. Good night. Good night. Ah, the bed feels good tonight. Pierre. What is it? There's someone in the room. A thief. Who is it? Who is it, I Light say? the candle, Pierre. Yes. Over that way. There. Jacques. Jacques. Jacques, what are you doing here? Why aren't you in bed, son? Answer me, Jacques. What are you doing in this room? Here. What's that in his hand? Stay where you are. Both of you. It looks like... Hold the light higher, Pierre. Yes. It's a knife. Jacques, what are you doing with that knife? Stand back. Don't come near me. Put down that knife. You would murder us in our beds. Stand back, I warn you. Give me the knife, Jacques. You wouldn't dare stab your own mother. I'll stab anybody. Anybody. Do you hear? Anybody. There you are. You're home early, Pierre. Oh, the fish are running poorly. Where have you been? At your brother's. Oh, how is his wife today? Worse. And little Perrot? She still needs nursing. Oh, I saw Joseph at the fishery on the way home. They, they need more money. We're running low. But what we have, we share. Oh, you're a kind one, Rouen. Doctors and medicines for the sick, that always takes money. And Perrot... She's such a tiny thing, and, and so helpless. I've fixed it so that later on she'll not be so bad off. What do you mean? In my mattress, I've sewed a Spanish doubloon wrapped in paper. I've written on the paper, for Perrot, so that there's no mistake as to whose it is. Where, where is Jacques? On another spree. With what? I don't know. He asked me for money, but as you told me, I refused him another centine. He must learn to work for what he gets. I uh, would like to visit my brother's place before supper. Uh, uh, look up here. What is this, Brouin? Water for my flowers. This dry spell, you know. But must it stand in the doorway? <laughs> Go along to your brother's. Supper in an hour. Oh, wait. Who is that coming up the path? Look through the window. Oh, it's Father Gabot, the rector from Piriac. I will let him in. I wonder why he comes now. Oh, good day, Father. Good day. I come with sad news, my friend. Sad news? Joseph's wife? The fever. It was too much for her. She passed away. Joseph will fish with me tomorrow. Sardines running any better? Not yet. A break in the weather would be good. Mm, for my garden, too. 
It will be harder taking Joseph on this way. We'll manage. If Jacques would only lend a hand. More hands are needed in hard times. Every little catch helps. Mm, as long as there are fish for you to catch, we'll eat. But a man needs meat now and again. Is that you, Broin? Yes. Came down to the shore because I couldn't wait. I have something to tell you. I have something to tell you. Pierre. Look. Look at this paper. I found it floating at the shore. My handwriting. For Perrot, it says. You know, then. The Spanish doubloon. Where, where is it? I don't know, Pierre. I looked for it this afternoon. I thought I'd take it to a safer place or give it to Perrot now when she needs it so much. But yes, it yes. was not in the mattress. Jacques, he found your hiding place. Where huh? are you going? I'm going to the cafe to find Jacques, to see if he took the coin. Go up to the house, Broin. Go up and wait for me. Florent, uh, have you seen my son, Jacques? He is in there, in the billiard room. Has he paid his score yet? Yes. Let me see with what he has paid you. Certainly. No, where is it? Oh, this coin, Pierre. Uh, my son paid you with that, eh? But naturally. No, I, I'll take it. Uh, here is silver for it. Uh, you, you see, there is a cross marked on the coin. I have sentimental reasons for keeping it. I understand. Uh, you uh, did not tell my son I was here. Eh? Well, of course not. I thought... Uh, that is good. Thank you, Pierre. I thank you, Florent. Au revoir. Au revoir. Did you find him, Pierre? Yes. Where? At Florent's cafe. And the coin? Did you find the coin? Look, is this it? Yes, it has the cross on it. Right. Does he know? No. Florent brought it to me secretly after Jacques paid his bill. What are we going to do? Find your wedding gown, Broin. You will have to wear it for what I plan. You look beautiful, Broan, the day of our wedding when you wore that gown. To think now I must wear it for this. Never mind. It is the custom. A mother and father in their wedding clothes shall judge an erring son. Oh, uh, fetch two candles from the kitchen, eh? And uh, the three-legged stool, too. There. We shall sit as judge and jury on this side of the fire. There. Now Jacques will sit here opposite us. Now the candles, eh? There now. That gives enough light. That gun in the chimney corner, Pierre. Careful, it is loaded. Pierre, I'm afraid. What are you going to do? What must be, must be. But I... Shh. He is coming. It is either very dark or he's very drunk. Let him in, eh? Eh? What's this? Is there going to be a wedding? Sit down, Jacques. Maybe this bucket of water will clear his head. No. <laughs> Sit down, Let me Jacques. alone. Sit down on the stool there. Well, Do I... as your father says. What is this? You have sinned against your mother and father. We are sitting in judgment over you. See here, you, you can't do this. The law will... If you make any noise, if you stir, if you don't sit up like a mast on your stool, I will shoot you like a dog. He means what he says, Jack. What do you want? Here is a bit of paper. Look at it. Have you ever seen it? No. Look closer. At the handwriting. That is your mother's handwriting, is it not? Uh, I guess so. I... Guess so. You know it is. All right. Yes, yes. See what it says? For Perrot. It says for little Perrot, who has no mother, whose father is suffering hard times, who needs every sound team anyone can offer. Well. Your mother wrapped up a Spanish doubloon in that bit of paper, sewed the whole of it into her mattress. And now, Jacques, uh -huh. the coin is no longer in the mattress. Uh, and I'm supposed to know where the coin is. Sit man. still. I found that bit of paper floating on the water when I came in. And then your mother told me of the missing coin. So I went to town. You were at Florence this afternoon, were you not, Jacques? Well, how did you... You did not think I knew, did you? But you don't deny it, eh? All right, I... I was at Florence. And you paid your score with a Spanish doubloon. Uh, what if I did? There are other gold coins in the country besides what my mother hides in her mattresses. Nobody but we three knew it was there. Well, maybe you took it and hid it so as to blame me. Jacques, 
Tell you I did not take the coin. How came you by the doubloon, then? I, I, I got it not. How can you prove it? I tell you I got it there. You insist you did not take your mother's coin, eh? I did not take it. Can you swear it on your salvation? I swear... Jack, take care. I'll not swear if it's not true. You can repent and mend your ways. There's still time. Oh, be quiet, old woman. You have always tried to ruin me. That is another thing to add to your wrongs. Now come to the point. Will you swear? Yes! All right, now. Take a look at this coin which Florent gave me. The one with which you paid your bill this afternoon. See the cross on the coin where the sardine merchant nicked it before he paid me? Did the coin you picked up in Nantes have that cross marked on it? Well, well, I... I, I... Answer me! No, no! Enough talk. I say nothing of all the wrong you've done before. No Cambrai maid shall die in the marketplace at Croissic. Say your prayers, Jacques, and let us be quick. Father Gabo is coming to hear your confession. He is already coming up the path to the house. Open the door for him, Bruin. Will you come in now, Father? Thank you. Bonjour, Father. Bonjour. Jacques is waiting for you. I am ready, son. No. No. He is waiting for your confession, Jacques. Speak, Jacques. I... The crime is worse when concealed. Confess to it. That makes it easier. Your mother is right, young man. The crime will weigh heavier on your conscience if you do not speak up. No. No. If I confess, he'll kill me. You seem to fear death more than eternal damnation. I, I will not do it. I will not do it. It is no use, Father. I guess he has always been willful, this boy. That has been the curse of this household ever since he was born. Very well. If you will not be needing me any longer, I have other visits to make, you know. Of course, Father. Pardon us, sir, for bringing you so far. I... I meant to give my son a lesson. Good night, then. Good night, Father. I... Good night, Father. I... 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 I Not I... another word. Get off to bed now. It's better this way. Maybe he'll repent. No, no, not him. Nevertheless, I'm glad you didn't hurt him. Never mind. This night is not over yet. I shall wait until he is asleep. What are you going to do? What must be, must be. What are you going to do? You shall see. You shall see. Who's there? That light, I... I, I can't see. Who is it? Father. Father. That rope. That strip of sail. Oh. What are you going to do to me? Pierre. No. Oh. Don't do it. If you will Don't not let me, I will do it alone. No. Don't go there. No. 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 Let me go. No. Get it now. Tie his feet. There. Where are you taking him? Jacques's cap. Where is he? Why are you holding his cap? Tell me, what have you done with him? Pierre, what? His cap. It fell into the bucket of water. It's floating. <laughs> on the surface of the water. <gasps> oh, Jacques, my son. It broke my poor wife's heart. She died within a week. And I... I was never the same. 
The thought of what I had done haunts me. I I could not fish by day. I, I could not sleep by night. In the end, my conscience drove me to go to see a priest. He refused me absolution until I, I promised to tell my story to a justice, which I did. He sentenced me to this. And here I sit, a man under a vow, doomed to watch over the water, to talk with no one, sitting, watching, waiting. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you The Strange Judgment. Bellkeeper, toll the bells.